Hello everyone. If you are working on a Gen-A based application, the part of prompt engineering is really, really crucial. Even the small changes which you make in the prompt can make significant changes in your artwork. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss about one of the cool features in MLflow Gen-A library, which is prompt optimization. We are going to walk through this tutorial step by step on how to improve your prompt and evaluate the prompt as your data set. Let's get started. First step, let's go ahead and start the MLflow server. To do that, I'm moving to the terminal and run the command MLflow server hyphen hyphen host. I'm going to run in the local host, the port 5000. Let's wait for the server to start up. Once that is done, move to your browser and let's load localhost 5000 and the MLflow server is up and running now. We have the MLflow UI. I'm using MLflow 3.5.1. Okay, let's move to the next step. We are going, for this particular experiment, we are going to use the Gemini 2.5 flash light API. For that, you have to set up the environment keys. I have already copied the keys in the .env file. So before you start running this particular notebook, make sure you have copied the environment keys here. So I'm going to run the imports. In the import section, we are defining the MLflow tracking URI. The MLflow is running a local host and the experiment name, which is the prompt optimization. To test this data set, we are going to use the AG news classification data set. Basically, this data set contains the set of news articles and the objective is to classify these articles into one among these four categories. So either word or sports, business or size. Let's go ahead and run this. Wait for the uh, data set to be loaded. We are loading it using Hugging Face uh, data sets module. Okay, now we have the data frame. And as this is a demo, uh, we are going to just pick few samples from our, from this data set. So I'm picking only 20 samples and we are going to perform the data preparation and uh, we are going to prepare the data in a way to, uh, which can be used with MLflow's uh, Gen AI evaluation library. For this, you need a list of dictionaries and each dictionary would contain an inputs and the expectations. In the inputs, we'll be sending in the article the actual article content and in the expectation, we will add the ground truth. So for instance, this article will be part of inputs and in the expectation, we will have the label, which is word. Now uh, we can see the sample training data here. Let's go ahead to the next step, which is to initialize the LLF. As I mentioned, we are going to use the Gemini 2.5 flash light uh, model here and uh, I have also added a rate limiter in order to control the uh, number of requests that has been, uh, that we are going to send it, send it to the action endpoint. So uh, let's initialize this. And we are using Langchain's chat Google generative AI wrapper for this LLM connection. Now, uh, as we are starting with this particular data set, let's try a simple prompt. You are a helpful assistant that can classify news articles into one of the following categories, world, sports, business, science, and we are going to embed this article here and send it to LLM, right? So the first step is to register the prompt. We are this is the first prompt that we are writing. So let's go ahead and register this prompt using ML for Gen AI register prompt. Once this is done, we can move back to the UI and go to the prompt section. And you can see that we have this news class fair version one. And here we have the prompt which we have created, right? Now this step is done. Now we have the prompt, we have the LLM, everything ready. The next step is to perform prediction. Okay, how? So in the predict method, we are just going to load a prompt, which is the prompt, the initial prompt that we have created. And then as we already have in the prompt, we have this article variable, which needs to be substituted. We are going to substitute that particular variable here using the format function and perform LLM.invoke, which is going to send this prompt to the Gemini endpoint, give the response and just return the response content, right? To test this predict function, we are going to pass in only the first value. Let's see how it works. Let's run this. Let's wait for the recent. Now you see the model has classified it as business, right? Now we want to perform this for uh, all the articles in our data set, at least the samples that we picked. To do that, we are going to write a custom scorer. So custom scorer is 
which is going to help us to evaluate the uh, compare the predictions compare the predictions against the ground truth so uh, this exact exact match method is going to take in the outputs and the expectations so outputs is something which is generated by LLM and expectation is the ground truth and compare these two information if it matches it returns true otherwise it returns false mlflow.generate.evaluate. evaluate so what it does is that it binds both your predict function and the exact match this custom scorer which have written into a single step now we are performing both prediction and the evaluation together now we can see that it has already started to evaluate while it is running let's quickly go to the ui and check the progress let's go to the ui and let's go to the experiments so this is the experiment which we created prompt optimization once we click on this okay of course we are using gen AI. and here you can see that it has already started uh, you know running this uh, view it has already started showing these traces and each of the api call we can track it here so this is the article this is the response from the model and this is the expected response for instance in the first one we saw that world was the um, you know expected label but model classified it as business so whenever there is a mismatch you see it is as see the assessment as false and whenever the uh, expected value is matched against the um, you know uh, the model output you see true so uh, let's wait for the completion here we have you know 10 out of 20 done let's just wait until we get all 20 done meanwhile you can refresh this okay okay the run has been completed let's go to the uh, experiments prompt optimization and we can go to the evaluation tab and in this particular evaluation tab we can view the overall assessment here we can see we have 20 different uh, ap hits and out of which we had around 67 percentage uh, of uh, good results right 67 percentage their result matches um, the lm's output matches with the crowd okay now this is the first step we have everything ready now let's go ahead and do the second important step which is the prompt optimization to optimize the prompt we have to invoke this method mlflora.genai.optimize prompts this method takes a couple of parameters the first one is the predict function we already have the predict function written which takes in the article formats it with the article uh, string sends it to gna uh, endpoint and extracts the result the training data so the list of 20 articles that we are uh, you know uh, be used for the baseline the prompt uri so this is the ml flows prompt uri let's turn this so this is the initial prompt which we created the first version of news classifier and the optimizer here we are using jepa prompt optimizer you can write your own optimizer as well but here we are using this one and we are going to use the openai's gpt5 mini model if you are going to use the openai model make sure you copy the openai api key inside the env file i have already done it and the last one which is the scorers the exact match custom scorer which we created in the previous step once we have all these things let's go ahead and run this so it's going to start testing the model with the initial prompt first so what it basically does is that it takes in our initial prompt and it iteratively improves this particular prompt by running the evaluation it's not uh, something where it just takes in the prompt sends it to the lm endpoint you know uh, prepares a better prompt and return it no instead it's going to perform few iterations and evaluate the prompt against our data set so we are going to see the uh, iterations once it gets started let's wait for it okay here you can see that iteration has been started and uh, there is a baseline score 0.6 now the um, this particular process tries to improve the prompt by uh, changing the prompt and also evaluating it against the data set now we can go to the ui refresh it and we can see that it has started the second evaluation so the first evaluation is the one which we did for the baseline which was 67 percentage 
here, right? 60 percentage, right? And now let's go to the prompt optimization step. So this is the evaluation and here you can see that it has already started to send in all these articles and uh, evaluating this prompt, right? And let's just wait for this process to be over. Here we can see the iteration one. Okay. Now here we can see that uh, this is the interim prompt that it has created. The iteration one. This this was the uh, initial prompt which we wrote, but you can see that output requirements, input format, classification rules. Let's just wait for uh, this process. It took around 17 minutes to complete this prompt optimization process. Let's go ahead and look into the output. Let's move back to the uh, MLflow UI. Move to the prompts pane. Now, this MLflow generated optimized prompts not only evaluates the and optimizes the prompt, but it also registers the best prompt as well. Now you can see that there is a version two. And here is the prompt, uh, the initial prompt that we had was like your news classifier and classified into these four categories. Now you see that uh, based on the prompt optimization, there are like clear defined rules. Here there's instruction that uh, in order to not explain what, what is the output that we uh, want, basically one among these four labels. And then the uh, input format, if, if there is a need for pre-processing, what are the things that needs to be done? And uh, what are the decision making rules? How do you define uh, whether an article to be a word, sports, business, or uh, you know, science? And in case of tiebreakers, where there is an ambiguity, uh, imagine in an article you have uh, keywords which are related to both world and the science, then how do you decide uh, which particular uh, label it falls to, right? The tie breaking scenarios. And here you can see the uh, keyword based uh, heuristics just to. Uh, identify those uh, keywords and define which label it is, right? And then a couple of examples for few short, right? And the strategies as such, right? And in the end, it says like be cons strict and uh, consistent, always written one among these labels, right? Now we have a, a well-structured prompt. Uh, initially, we started with just uh, maybe a four-liner prompt, but uh, now we have well-defined prompts with the uh, important rules, which is uh, very specific to our data set. And uh, let's try to uh, run this particular prompt against uh, uh, the same data set we had. Of course, we had only 20 samples, but let's just try running it. Let's go back to the uh, notebook. Now, after this prompt step, uh, optimization step, let's go ahead and run this predict function. Now, this predict function takes in the optimized prompt URI. So here uh, we have used result.optimize the prompt URI. So let's print this. Okay, here you can see we are using the second version of use classifier, which is the optimized prompt, right? Now, uh, model is able to return the result. Let's go ahead and run the same evaluate method. Now, we are running this MLflow evaluation against the optimized prompt. Let's wait for the evaluation to be over and we can go ahead and see if there is any improvement in the in terms of result percentage. Let's wait for it. Okay, the evaluation is done. Let's go ahead and to go ahead and look into the UI. Let's go to the experiments, the prompt optimization. Experiment. Let's go to the evaluations. Now we can see that we have uh, three uh, different steps. The first one was the baseline and second one was the prompt optimization. Now we have this uh, optimized prompt as such, right? So this is the evaluation that we did with the optimized prompt. Let's expand this a bit. And here you can see that um, a drastic difference, right? In in this particular case, I guess only one, there was only one failure, right? This one, apart from this, we have all the uh, ones where, you know, the, um, output from the LLM matches with the ground truth, right? In in uh, the initial iteration, you could have uh, seen that uh, there are like a lot of cases where you see these asterisk symbols where model add and tries to add the uh, any extra symbols to the output, right? But here uh, in the output, you can see that it, it's much more clear. You all this output does, output which we see is one among those four categories, right? There may be one or two failures. So now uh, we can clearly see there is an improvement in result, but it's not about the uh, result as such, it's more about the prompt, right? Now we can see that the prompt that we have is 
very well structured and it it has defined rules for uh, tagging these uh, you know um, uh, articles uh, when we think in think uh, from a realistic use case uh, point of view, uh, we need defined guidelines for, uh, you know, perform these kind of tasks. It's not that you just give four, uh, you know, uh, categories and uh, ask the LLM to tag, right? So we need defined rules. We need to, uh, you know, uh, instruct the LLM to handle the ambiguity, how uh, we want to handle those ambiguities, right? And this prompt is way well structured than the one that we initially created. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to give it a try with your own data set and see how well you can automate the prompts and let us know in the comments as well. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.